song and testimony is my story, but it's also the story of my mama. Back in 89, I would have probably described my life as a, as a train wreck. I'd failed at everything I'd done, you know, or I didn't find satisfaction. I'd run businesses, been to university. At the age of 39 and nearly 40, I was just out of an outlaw motorcycle gang. I had a $100,000 a year cocaine habit. My heart was like concrete. I looked inside it and there was nothing there. Maybe just my mama, that's about all. Around about this time, my mama, who had a lifetime of an alcoholic stepfather, and he beat mum, and I beat him, and he beat me, and kicked me out the window, and so on, and she'd had enough. She'd spent a lifetime under it. She drove a car into a tree. She was off to kill herself. She didn't die, but she wrote the car off pretty bad, and she wound up in hospital. And recovering in a war with eight women. Late in the afternoon, a man walked in with a fairly large King James Bible under his arm. He looked around the ward and with piercing eyes, he zeroed in on my mum and he walked up to her and he said, I've come to tell you about Jesus. Mum said she turned her head away. What did Jesus ever do for her? A few months later, there was a travelling gospel trio come to our little country town. And they walked around, they put up posters, and the poster said, Come and have some pre coffee. Listen to some gospel songs and hear about Jesus. My mama went along, and well, she came home. <laughs> she came home with religion. Wow. She had that jump over a burning bush sort of religion. And I was pretty happy that, because Mama needed some happiness. She'd tell me about Jesus, and Johnny, she'd say, he's so wonderful. And I'd say, ah, Mum, it's all right, you know. It got that bad in the end, I said to Mama, Mama, if you don't stop talking about Jesus, I'm not going to come and visit you anymore. Of course, I didn't mean it, but... <laughs> well, she stopped talking about Jesus. I'd go and visit her, and she'd make me a cup of coffee and cut me a nice slice of big pie, and she'd sit there reading that big old King James Bible. <laughs> and I'd be watching her out of the corner of my eye, just waiting for her to tell me about Jesus. <laughs> Daring her to. <laughs> and she'd look at me and she'd say, Johnny, what does this word mean? And of course, my mama never had much of an education, and so I'd explain it to her. I remember one of the words was redeemed. I said, Mama, that's just like having something in the pawn shop that belongs to you, and you just go and get it back. And because I knew, I knew what she was doing. I know my mama. I tell you, we covered every word in John 3:16. I think for God so loved the world, she wanted to know every single word. What it mean? What does it mean by God so loved the world, Johnny? And I'd say, Mum, that's just humankind. It's not the world itself. It's, it's us. It's people, Mama. Then she'd say, Well, what do you reckon it means by he gave his only son? I knew what she was up to. I don't think even she knew what was going on in my life. She didn't know about my cocaine habit. She didn't know. I felt dead inside, you know. There came a day when I just hit the wall. There was no going on and no going back. It was on my 40th birthday, although I didn't know it at the time. I was probably too far gone and miserable for that. And I sat in my mama's kitchen and I felt the peace. She looked across at me with tears in her eyes. She said, Johnny, God loves you so. I said, no, no, mum. And I thought I'd say to her just to keep her happy. I said, Mum, have you got a cross I could wear? She said,
said, son, you need a cross on your heart. And then she looked at me with those beautiful eyes that I've done all my life. With tears in them, but there was more. There was something behind those eyes I didn't see before. Such love. And she asked me, she said, Johnny, Johnny, would you receive Jesus right now? I heard myself say in a faraway, quiet voice, yes, Mum. I knelt down on the line over Mum's old kitchen and she put her hands on my head and Jesus walked into my life. Wow, it was all true, it was real. I looked across at that old Bible and I thought, Mama, the Word of God is true, Mama. <laughs> oh, she had a party, she was jumping around the kitchen, she rung up a whole church. Me, I was just dumbstruck. No matter what you asked me, no matter where I went for the next few weeks, if I was in town buying petrol, they'd say, would there be anything else, sir? And I'd look at them with tears running down my face, and I'd say, he's alive. <laughs> it's all true. Oh, dear. Like I started to say, this began as this, a train wreck. My life was like that train wreck, you know. Almost as if you could say two freight trains had collided somewhere in the night. There was nothing left, just trash and burning rubble. And the father looked down amongst that rubble and he found one broken, twisted piece of metal. Dull, burnt, useless really. He picked it up carefully and he brushed the dirt away from it. And he spat upon it and carefully began to polish it with his sleeve. He said, I could make something beautiful from this life. Something beautiful. Something good. Oh, my confusion, Lord. You understood. And all I had to offer him. Brokenness and And he made something beautiful out of my life. You know, me and my mama, we went around, we just went out on campaigns and she'd come with me and we lived on her pension because I just loved Jesus that much. <laughs> I couldn't even get a job there for a while. And we go to little country towns and me and her would go around and we'd stick a post in the main street and we'd say, Oh, come and hear some gospel songs and hear about Jesus. Mum was my missionary partner for nearly 12 years after I got saved. Oh, she led that rotten old stepfather to the Lord too. <laughs> he got saved gloriously six months before he died. I held him in the baptism tank myself and he looked up to some some we couldn't see. I think he was looking straight at Jesus and he said, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. He sat out the back in his wheelchair feeding the birds bare breadcrumbs and reading his Bible and I was there one day and he looked at Mama with tears in his eyes. He said, Mama, he said, we blew a whole lifetime. Yeah, come time my mother was being promoted to glory. I looked after her and I didn't know day would come, but it did. This last little bit I'm going to play here is just a little bit of a tribute to her, I guess. It won't take too long if you stick with me. There ain't no dust, there ain't no dust, there ain't no dust, on my little old hostage case. Never mind, there ain't no dust. Bible, I got it back. All of its colors, they're warm now with age. And although it's old and it's wrinkled, my mother's there on every page. You see, my mama used to mark her Bible in pink, <laughs> pink highlighter. And as I go through it today, I quite often come across a passage that she wrote. And that's why I sing this song. 
There ain't no dust on my mother's old Bible. Oh, all its covers they're worn out with age. And although it's a hole and it's wrinkled, my mother's in our neighborhood. Well, the night the angels took her, my mother called me to her side, and she handed me her Bible. She said, "Son, let God be your God." Mama, there ain't no dust on that Bible. I use it every day, Mama. If you sat and you listen to this and you feel your heart stirred up, I want to tell you that God is in the business of salvaging people. If you feel like today that your life is a train wreck, that there's nothing in your heart, you feel lost and all alone, could I invite you right now to come to Him? He loves you so. He loves you so. Where we are in the world, you're hearing this. Do you think the Father wouldn't give you Jesus after he sent his son to go through all that in our place? He's the most wonderful, wonderful person you'll ever want. He will be your everything. Well, that's the story of the train wreck. These days I'm happily married to a beautiful Christian lady with soft eyes. We work in full-time ministry with young men who are suffering, recovering from drug addiction and alcohol addiction. Young men that have put their trust in Christ. God has really and truly restored my life. And I give him all the honour and all the praise and all the glory. My name is John. I live in Brisbane in Australia and I hope this has blessed you. Bye-bye.